Ja, Mike Mike's Daily Podcast. F -F Episode 1263. It's Mike Matthews. Mike, happy to be back behind the mic. Because I've been away. Well, actually, I was on the country radio station on the internet called Country Crossroads Radio over the weekend. Did you tune in? You know what I found out? That that station is going to rock. Mike's Daily Podcast. Because the cool operations manager, Josh Tanner, is going to be adding some more Americana. Mike's Daily Podcast. And I love Americana music. It's really the bomb because it has lots of cool lyrics in their songs. What? Mike, I only listen to Drake. Well, you have got to get awake and find uh, a whole bunch of other great bands out there. Mike's Daily Podcast. And musicians. All kinds of great music in the world to check out, my friend. Mike's You know, Daily my friend's wife Podcast. gave me some awful advice yeah. on women on Friday. I was just, what the... Okay, so I went out on a kind of a date with this girl that I met at a party. And and we're around the same age, and she's pretty. But, you know, you get that feeling after you've been with someone. You know, you know if there's chemistry there, right? And there wasn't chemistry. She seemed like she was annoyed, like she wasn't enjoying... Being in my company and I was not really enjoying her cup. So it, you know, it was not good. But my friend's wife said, Oh, give it one more try. What do you think? Should I give it one more try? Should I put myself through torture one more time? At my point in my life, I feel like I have enough torture from other things that I kind of want to bring down the torture level down a little bit. Getting home from Fremont, going from Fremont to Podcastro Valley after work, even though it's only like one o'clock in the afternoon, is freaking torture. I can't, I can't understand why there are so many cars trying to get up to the Castro Valley, going north. It's always north in the Bay. Everybody's always trying to go north. I don't get it. I don't get it. But look who just walked in. Thank you for listening to the show today. And I would like to hear your opinion. 336-MM-DAILY. Call me at 336-MM-DAILY. My name is Mike Matthews. Look who just walked in. Hi, Mike. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How are you doing? I introduced Grano Fiddle Player to tell you what. What? You should give that girl another chance. Yeah, Mike. You should give her another chance. Worst advice, worst advice ever. Mike, come on now. Trump got up there on Friday and he said, this is a new America. We're making America great again. And we're making America date again. So go date. I, you know, with someone that I like, sure. With someone that I have some connection with, sure. But not the... Beating a dead horse. Oh, sorry about that, Nelly. I'm a little slow with the sound effect. Hold on. Sorry about that, Nelly. <laughs> Mark, Nelly says that's okay. I really want to rename Nelly Winnie. No. Winnie's a poo. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Look who else just walked in. Hello, Mark. I make the root beer and the brewmaster. Oh, boy. I have some root beer. Oh, root beer. Scary. No, it's delicious. It rained a lot again this way. Now we're supposed to have sun over the next couple of days, and Southern California apparently had a lot of rain, and there was all the. It, if it rains in Southern California, everything slides into the ocean. That's how it is. Bay Area, at least, we have flash floods, but. The ground is absorbed. The water is absorbed into the ground. And I have a podcast picture that has to do with that. But we'll get to that in a moment. First, my part-time job has a TV. And the guy that's on before me, he always leaves it on something crappy. 
Some crappy movie Some crappy TV show Yesterday he left it on The Cable Guy With Jim Carrey Matthew Broderick I did not realize how good a movie that is Well It made me laugh in parts I would have hated to spend back then How much was a movie ticket? Seven bucks On it But it had Ben Stiller As well as Jack Black in it I had forgotten they were in it But there is one scene, and I'm not going to try and find it and play it on here because I'm going to get dinged and then I'm going to get pulled off of iHeartRadio, but then I'm not even on iHeartRadio, even though they told me I'd be on iHeartRadio. But there's a scene where Jim Carrey as the cable guy says to Matthew Broderick whilst he is standing, while Jim Carrey is standing on a huge satellite dish. He gives this big speech about how someday you'll be able to watch any channel you want and you'll be able to do shopping from your home. You'll never have to leave your house. And that that day is here. That day is here. So in some ways, that awful, awful movie predicted the future. Although back then, we all pretty much knew what the future was going to be anyway, didn't we? We knew this was all coming at some point. We'd be able to shop from home. You already could shop from home back then if you had a catalog. You could just say, I want this, and then call the number and they send it to you. That's what the Home Shopping Network was all about. Here's today's podcast picture. This is the podcast picture I was talking about earlier, and I made an allusion to. And that is a picture of Marilyn. She's so beautiful. Oh, wait, nope. It's not her. Sorry, a friend of mine somehow got into my pictures here. Uh... This picture is was taken in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Podcastro Valley, somewhere in Cole Canyon, at the Cole Canyon Park. And it is freaking drenched there, okay? The water has been coming down for weeks now. One of the wettest Novembers, Decembers, Januarys we've ever had. There's a creek that runs through Cole Canyon Creek, Cole Canyon Creek Park. There's a creek that runs through there that has completely torn out like all the trees that were... All these trees grew into the creek over the years because there's no water. And now all those trees are gone. It looks like a bomb went off. Just all swept away. And it's funny, in this one little area of the park where there's a bridge, I always see a, a, a duck on the creek. Looks like it's shooting the rapids. I love watching shooting the rapids ducks. I don't know why they like to fly there and fly and and shoot the rapids. They have fun doing it. Somehow a brochure got out. This is a family vacation for ducks to shoot the rapids at Call Canyon Creek. I don't know. But there there is a sign. They put all these signs out during the drought that say brown is the new green. Due to severe drought conditions, irrigation for some park areas has been temporarily suspended to conserve water. Okay, the idiots that run that place, and I call them idiots because one time I nearly separated my head from my body trying to walk through uh, the, uh, on one of the trails, there was a branch that was too low and it smacked me right in the head, left a big gash. I think I still have the scar from that. And, and, and they're like idiots there. They, they have somebody that walks a horse, rides a horse. One of the rangers rides a horse on the trail. And they only ride the horse while uh, the ground is really wet. So it churns the ground of the trail and makes the trail completely unwalkable. Because it's like this big churned up mud patch and you can't walk the trails. So the, the, the very fact that they still have this sign up, brown is the new green. And in, in the picture, of course, it's completely green. There's no brown at all. So what? Why? East Bay Regional Park District. By the way, they did a, what do you call it? It's not sabotage. It's the thing where you, uh, it'll come to me in a second. It, they did a, 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 a big, not a massacre. It's not that violent. They did something where they gave a bunch of tickets out to people that had their dogs off leash In Fairmont Ridge, where I go a lot, and I post a lot of podcast pictures from there, they just so totally came out of nowhere, ambushed, thank you, ambushed all these 
dog walkers that had their dogs off leash and gave out three tickets. Three people got ticketed. Four people, actually. Uh, three because they had their dog off leash and one because their dog would not respond to commands, uh, vocal, vocal commands. And the dog was just kind of being reckless and running all over the place. So they gave out four tickets, each one at $300 a pop. And I know that because almost uh, three years ago to the day, I got a ticket having Basil the Boxer off leash at Oyster Bay Regional Shoreline where they say you you can have your dog off leash but if you go into this one area where they have a sign but where I came in I didn't see the sign and I tried to plead my case to the court and the judge said oh you made a good case Mike but nope you're still gonna have to pay the ticket anyway and I had to pay $300 and the stupid uh, t- the two Cops showed up that gave me the ticket. They were like San Leandro police and they, they came up to, de- to defend the ticket that they gave me. And one of these days, I'm going to dig up the guy's name. I want to say his name was Marshall or something and, and, and publicize it on my podcast, but I'm not that vindictive. It's all water under the bridge. Lots of water, lots of rainwater. So I can't believe they did that at Fairmont Ridge. They ambushed all these people with their dogs off leash. And it's this one little area. So they can be off leash past this point if you go up the hill at Fairmont Ridge. But you have to be, I think, within 200 feet. You have to be past the 200 feet uh, from the parking lot. Which I have uh, had kept Basil on leash. They put a sign up and I said, okay, I'm going to follow this law. I don't want to get a ticket again. But obviously... There are people that want to break the rules and oh the other interesting thing it really wasn't an ambush because the cops were just sitting there with their lights on they had their lights on in the parking lot watching the people coming down and gave them the tickets that was so yeah maybe they deserve their tickets i don't know but that was an interesting day so thank you very much Maybe East Bay Regional Park District, who has $300 of my money, will get around to taking these signs out, saying that brown is the new green. Who knows? But we have another park department we're going to talk about in the segment called Mike Rips Someone a New One. I guess I ripped someone a new one already. I, I ripped the East Bay Regional Park District a new one. Or was I ripping the people that had their dogs off the leash a new one? I don't know. I just want to spread love around the world. Maybe I was... Ripping the guy who leaves the TV on stupid things, a new one. Or the friend's wife who gave me awful advice on women, a new one. I don't know. All I know is that mikesdailypodcast.com has a link to Amazon where you can click on that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy. Maybe you want a cot. I got my cot. It's very comfortable. So buy whatever it is you're going to buy, but click on that Amazon link first and do it and it helps support the show. There's also a PayPal there. If you'd like to donate to the show, you'll get a special greeting, a personalized MP3 for thee from all the Cafe Anyway characters. And there's also links to all the other places you can catch the show. Also to that internet country radio station I was talking about that's got Americana music starting next month, which I love. And there's a link to Google Play and the podcast website, all the places you can listen to the show. Oh, and the phone number, too, if you'd like to call. And the past interviews and past podcast pictures at mikesdailypodcast.com. Mike rip someone a new one. Because you'd be in jail. Oh, a little Beyonce. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I am so fascinated by how conservative talk show hosts, which I was listening to a little bit today to some show, how they still have to continue to bash Obama, even though he's out of office. But they've got nothing else to do. They bash the uh, women protesters that protested on Saturday all around the world. They had, to pro- they had to bash that because they're white men, of course. But the Interior Department began tweeting again on Saturday, a day after an employee shared tweets that appeared unsympathetic to our new president. This according to the Associated Press, and it prompted a temporary department-wide freeze on tweeting from its official accounts. 
The Twitter prohibition came on Friday after the official account of the National Park Service, a bureau of the department, retweeted a pair of posts to its 315,000 followers that seemed to be a swipe at Trump on his initial day in office. The first was a photo that compared the crowd gathered on the National Mall for Trump to the much larger gathering that stood in the same spot eight years earlier for President Obama swearing in. Okay, it is a natural fact that Obama had a huge turnout. Huge. And, or huge. And now, in pertaining to this, Trump, of course, having anyone dispute his size, has to say this word. Wrong. And he, of course, tweeted that that that. Oh, and then he had his uh, press secretary. That's the word I wanted. I couldn't think of what the name was on the last show. Press secretary. Uh, the guy, sw- sw- uh, Swer Swerny Spicer. That guy lambasted the media for saying that Trump's size was smaller than Obama's, <laughs> and. Like it's even an issue. This this really is not an issue, and I'm so sick of hearing about the inauguration. And I'm so I I watched the speech, I watched it live while it was happening, and I thought to myself, hey, this is the first inauguration speech I've ever heard that I was not bored listening to. I was kind of riveted. I was very interested in what he was going to say, and then he said it, and I felt as an American. A little bit, you know, excited to be an American. And I felt, hey, yeah, America's great. And then I heard all of the uh, people on the left saying, oh, no, 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 wait. That speech was directed towards his, his base, his white supremacist base. And when you look at it that way, you're like, oh, my God, wow. I liked the speech better when it was in its original German. But it's... It's weird. It's different views of it. I, uh, as you know from the last show, was trying to approach the inauguration day from a positive point of view. At any rate, I don't like the fact that... What's his name? Spicer. And then the Spice... Whatever this press secretary's name is. And the Kelly Conaway lady was saying, Oh, uh, it's all a lie. Trump had way more people. The media is lying all the time. And that's scary. And then she said something like to the NBC host, I am I'm th- rethinking our relationship. I may not show up on the show anymore, basically. And they could do that if they want. Trump can Trump's people can just completely say to the media, yeah, we're going to just deliver all our media through our our website and our tweets. But my comment to them would be don't mess with the the journalists people may hate the media that support trump but a lot of people still rely on nbc and the big networks and they'll listen to the information that they put out i guess where i'm going with this is uh, who am i ripping a new one to uh, i guess people trying to mess with me <laughs> the second pointed out oh the other tweet yeah let's continue the tweets the second pointed out that web pages about some issues including climate change and civil rights has been removed from the white house site ah yes i heard about that that was very interesting a spokesman for the national park service said saturday that the retweets were inconsistent with the agency's approach to engage the public through social media Quote, out of an abundance of caution while we investigated the situation involving these tweets, the Department of Interior's communications team determined that it was important to stand down Twitter activity across the department temporarily, except in the case of public safety. Now, wait a minute. So they're working for Trump now. How are they getting away with this, I'm wondering? The retweets were deleted from the National Park Service account. The department began retweeting again Saturday morning with the first post reading that we regret the mistaken RTs from our account yesterday. Trump weaponized his own Twitter account during his campaign using it to bash opponents and share his messages directly to his supporters. So tell me what you really think. Remember that expression? So tell me how you really feel. 
I will tweet how I really feel. Government, policy, state, that federal agencies must agree with the contents of its social media posts. For decades, the National Park Service provided official crowd estimates for gatherings on the National Mall, but it no longer does. The policy changed after the Million Man March in 1995, a gathering of black men meant to show renewed commitment to family and solidarity. The Park Service estimated 400,000 people attended the march, making it one of the largest demonstrations in the history of Washington. But organizers believed they reached their goal of 1 million participants and threatened legal action. No lawsuit was filed, but the dispute was enough to get the Park Service out of the head counting business. Ah, that's how it happened. So who's going to be running the Interior Department? U.S. Representative Ryan Zink of Montana. Supposedly, the confirmation hearings began last week. And we'll see. I guess this was the last bastion of the people that were hired by Obama they're like oh let's just let's just keep it going a little bit longer as we go outside a cafe anyway we're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley Mont so who was I ripping a new one to uh, Rangers tweeters the president conservative talk show host I think we all need a good ripping now and then Maybe we need a little bit of rain to wash away our bad thoughts and bring in good thoughts and positivity. What the hell? Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.